Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and we're going to work on class notes B in lesson seven. So we are asked here to solve this third order constant coefficient linear ODE, which is also hom homogeneous. And let me scroll up a little bit and remind you of how we do that. Um, so in general, if we want to solve a constant coefficient nth order linear ODE, we're going to do the same thing that we did for constant coefficient second order linear ODEs where we used the uh, trial solution e to the rt. We substituted it into the ODE, and that gave us a characteristic equation. What's going to be different in this nth order ODE case is that the characteristic equation will be an nth degree polynomial. So in the second order ODE case, we got a quadratic function, and we had a quadratic equation. So that gave us a way to find the roots relatively algorithmically. We you know, plug and chug, so to speak. Here, that might not be the case. You know, depending on the order of the polynomial, it might be you know take take you a little while to find these roots. So I'm gonna, while we're doing this example, remind you of how to solve higher order uh, polynomials for uh, find the roots of them. So all right, we're gonna do that here. And first thing I'll do is write out the characteristic equation for this. Just like in the second order ODE case, the quick way to do this is you convert the power, the order, the o order, <laughs> excuse me, of the derivative to the powers of r. So this becomes r cubed minus 2r squared minus r to the first plus 2 equals 0. Great. And that is the characteristic equation for this problem. So what do we do with that? Well, the first method I want to remind you for solving, for finding roots of higher order polynomials is uh, the factoring by grouping. So when you look at these first two terms here, um, both of them have an r squared. So I can factor that out, r minus 2. And then when you look at, um, oops, uh, this happens to me sometimes. Now I have to find where we were. <laughs> oh, boy. Sorry, I'm jumping around trying to figure out. Oh, I think this is the lesson, lesson seven. OK, excuse me. We did that in the previous video. There we go. Awesome. Thank you for bearing with me. So over here, we are going to try to factor out things in a way that leaves one of these terms in the equation. And we see that there's an r minus 2 here. And this looks like it might contain an r minus 2. So the way I conjure that up is by factoring out a negative 1. So that leaves me with r minus 2 here. Right? Negative times r is negative r. And negative negative 2 is the positive 2 that's there. Great. So, And then one more step. So now I have these two terms in the ODE, sorry, in the equation. And I'm going to factor out r minus 2 from each term. So what I'm left with is the r squared and the negative 1 that's here. So r squared minus 1. Great. And then what do you know? I have a difference of squares here. So I'm going to factor that r minus 1, r plus 1. Okay. So this tells me that uh, r equals negative 1, 1, and 2 are the three solutions to the characteristic equation. And just like what happened in the constant coefficient second order linear ODE case, um, we use e to the rt as the uh, solution to the ODE based off of these roots. So r equals negative 1 generates the solution e to the minus 1 times t. Uh, back here, r equals 1 generates the solution e to the 1 times t. And then r equals 2 generates the solution e to the 2t. All right. In this particular setting, you know, I'm starting off um, easy, by which I mean it gets more complicated with the factoring and the complex numbers. Uh, we have gotten three real r values, and there are, there, you know, none of them are equal. None, nothing repeats. So that's the the simplest setting for this particular type of problem. And we then write out our general solution, uh, c1 e to the minus t plus c2 e to the t plus c3 e to the 2t. And I want to talk through why this is, in fact, the general solution. right? So I want to scroll back to the theorem that tells us 
what the general solution looks like. And we talked about this in the previous video. Here it is. And let me just remind you of what that theorem says. So if I have a homogeneous and third order linear ODE, and I have found n independent solutions, okay, no solution is a linear combination of the others, then every solution has the form that we've been working with. Okay, so independent solutions. All right, so let's go back to what we just did and look at the three functions that we have. What are the three functions we have? We have uh, solutions e to the minus t, e to the t, e to the 2t. So, you know, before I can write this and claim that it's a general solution based on that theorem, I would have to know that these three functions are independent solutions. Luckily, uh, if I go back to the previous example, um, oh, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, luckily, from the previous example, this is exactly what we did. Um, but that is that is not true. Okay, so uh, if I went over and did this again, then I would do a very similar analysis as in the previous example to figure out that these three functions are indeed independent functions. You can see sometimes, certainly, it's good to have a hunch in any sort of claim or, or proof or calculation before you do it. You can see that uh, you should have a hunch that there's no way that these any one of these functions could be expressed as the other two. Um, Right, this is an exponential function that is growing much faster than that one. Um, and, you know, this is an exponential function that's growing. This one is decaying. Uh, so, you know, certainly you can try to combine two of these uh, to try to get the third. Um, but again, if you run through the analysis that we did in the previous example, you will find that they are, in fact, independent functions. And that gets you to this conclusion from the theorem that the general solution is the linear combination of those three functions.